When it comes to the slums, when it comes to people who are most vulnerable, uh, prostitutes and beggars and people who are into crime, there's been very little or no impact in microfinance till Ingrid came along. And when you have this base where the original members are 50 women beggars, these are all examples of breakthroughs that need to be known so that they can have a life beyond Jamie Bora and beyond Kenya. There is no limit to what we can do in Jamie Bora. I'm Ingrid Monroe. I'm in charge of Jami Bora, which is now a big group of companies. We started with 50 beggars 11 years ago, and we are the bankers of the poor. So the first advice I have to well-intended people is don't block the poor, don't stop them. Encourage them, whatever they start themselves, try to encourage them to do that, and expect a lot from them. I came to Nairobi when I was 30 years and I go, I was in rural home with my family and my husband chased me away because I did not get birth uh, baby girls. I have only boys. So my husband said, you can go, I don't want to see you here in my house. And I say, what can I do? I started my life in a street, I said, street beggar with my children. I come from Madare. Madare is one of the largest slums in Kenya. Life is unbearable, and as a result of that, I had to eat, I had to dress. I was desperate. I used to, to sleep at the daytime because members of the public were crying for my blood. Armed policemen, they also wanted to shoot me. I marked people for a long time until Jamie Bora came to Madari. My life without Jamie Bora, sincerely speaking, I could have died long, long time ago. I was living in Liftivari, somewhere called Molo. In that side, I had my land, which was five acres. In 1992, it came a very bad crisis. People were killed, houses were burnt, and even small children were killed. I had nothing because you couldn't carry anything except my children. My children were, were five, three boys and two girls. When I came in Nairobi, I struggled much because I didn't know anybody. If it is not Jamibora, I don't know why I could be like me. I could have already died because of poorness. If I was to choose one reason for the success of Jamibora, I think the biggest reason is that we've always employed from among the members themselves. All our staff are recruited from the membership. I think that's our biggest secret, actually. Jamibora is a microfinance institution, and uh, Jamibora is a Kiswahili name that means better family. The people that are in Jamibora are members because they belong to one another. We call it a family, and therefore they are members of this family. It's one big family. When we started Jamibora with 50 beggars, I thought that we started a small club. And from 1999 to date, Jamibora has close to 300,000 members countrywide. And if you take that number with the normal Kenyan family, that's close to 1.5 million people with over 215 branches all over the country. And so it, we grew like a bushfire, you see, and after uh, five months we had to register it as a, as a, to be a regulated organization. 
And that's when we came up with the name Jami Bora. Well, you have to be a group of five people and you support each other. So you choose four very good friends of yours. But you have to take someone who you really trust, the person who really believes in you, the person who really understands where to make a step in life. That's the first step. Once you have the five people, you come to the Jamibora, any branch. When you see the branch, one of the staff of Jamibora, maybe a loans officer or a branch manager, will come and explain the product of Jamibora. Once you become a member, you're, you, you're issued with an ATM card that helps you to be identified as a member and also to deposit your savings and withdraw a loan. They have to save for at least six weeks before they can take their first loan. And they can only borrow twice as much as they have saved. So most people save for half a year or four months. And then we keep the savings in a special account for them, still their money, and it's their buffer. It's not money that we take and say, this is our security if you're not paying. It is their security. Once the member has uh, finished their period of saving, they will come to the office at the branch and they will be able to bring their, get their statement from the POS at the cashier and show this is my saving. And then they will be able to feel, and also the other members, if they are first timers, they have to have savings to guarantee the other member as security. Then a loans officer has to go and assess the business and see and know where the member is located and where they are doing their business. So once they have filled the loan form, the manager will sign the loan form. The loan will be processed and dispersed in the POS system, whereby they are able to come at their branch and withdraw the loan from the POS. As they move climbing up after they save for 2,000 shillings, they can also get double and get the 4,000 shillings. As they continue climbing, they grow even to qualify for other bigger loans depending on how their business is doing. Once the member has been able to withdraw the loan and uh, go do business, they begin to repay the loan immediately. Because we want to, the, the culture and discipline of saving, we want to sustain it even in the repayment of the loan. They can pay their loan in between three months and one year because these members, they want to pay their loans as quick as possible. The faster you pay your loan, the lesser the interest. They want to repay their loans as quick as possible so they can get a bigger loan for their business. We found that it was a lot of wisdom in that rule that you have to be a group of five. Because when you are very poor and you start your small little business, you get very easily discouraged. But if you are five and you talk to each other all the time, you said, there's always one who's braver than the others and say, oh, have you thought about doing it this way? Or have you thought about this possibility? So it's a support for them. The types of loans that Jamibora is offering, we have the micro business, that is the MB micro business loan that begins from 600 or 800 to 59,000 shillings. We have the Raja business loan. This is from 60,000 to 700,000. That means that the member has succeeded and uh, wants to bring more capital, more goods for the, the customers. This means the member has to have some uh, security. We don't ask for security that the member cannot provide. We ask for household goods, that is a sofa set, table, chair, wardrobe, bed, whatever, that has to act as security for the uh, loan. And as long as they have savings, they can be able to access a school fees loan while serving the business loan at the same time. We have a disaster loan that these members who ha are having loans, if they have lost either through thuggery or fire, gutted down their businesses, we are able to refinance back their business. If somebody had a loan of 20 or 30 or 50, we are able to give them again the very same loan so that they can be able to put back their business and repay the loan and also sustain their family. 
So the first loan is forgiven. Well, it came about like everything else in Jamibora. We saw a need and we did something about it. Uh, in the first year, at the end of the first year we existed, we noticed that some people had difficulties paying their loans. And when we looked into that, we didn't hammer them in the head and say, you pay. We, found, we tried to find out what's your problem. We found that they had, almost all of them had the same problem. There was one person in the family who was, had to be taken into a hospital. And hospitals are not free here. And they, there's no mother in the world who let her kid die because she has to pay her loan to Jamibora or any other bank. She will spend the money on the child first. So we decided this was not something we could fight with. This is something we had to solve. The other microfinance institutions, they would come in and take people's uh, chair or something else, you know, to cover their costs. And we did the opposite. We said, we have to help them to manage their health. We looked at all health insurance companies. We asked them what they could do, but they were too expensive. So we decided, like we do in Jamibora, we'll do it ourselves. We came up with an in-house health insurance program, a pool whereby we put all the resources. So it's a requirement and it's compulsory for every member to pay a health insurance cover. A member with four dependents under the age of 18 years, this, these children have to be under the age of 18 years, four of them, it cost 1,200 for a whole year and it covers the whole family for inpatient treatment, which is most of the time the most unaffordable or scary thing to our members. And also we can say our health insurance program, it caters for everything, including HIV AIDS, so long as the member is admitted in a hospital. And everybody thought we were crazy. Now Ingrid has gone crazy. She's gonna destroy this beautiful microfinance program that she has. And, and they will lose all their money. Today, almost 10 years later, we have never had one dollar or one kroner or one pound, nothing in any currency in support for this health insurance. And it's not that people don't like it, it's just that we have decided not to ask for any grant. And we have built reserves. We are building reserves. And the biggest, biggest joy for us is we didn't even understand when we started it how important this would be. To confess the truth, we started it because we needed to protect our microfinance program. But it has become something so important in itself. Because if you, your kid is sick, you don't, doesn't have to die. If you get sick yourself, and you are the mother, you don't have to die. And you know, if a mother dies among the poor, then maybe five, six kids become street children. We had a young man, the mother is our member. So the boy was admitted at Kenyatta National Hospital, whereby open heart surgery was done. And uh, we, paid, we paid to that particular child bill over 200,000 Kenya shillings. And the mother was very, very poor. And uh, open heart surgery is a major operation it was very, very successful, and the boy went back to school. He passed with flying colors, and now the boy is in university. The business school is something we also started because we saw a need. So we started a very humble little business school, and it has grown into a very big, a very big thing in itself, actually. A business school in Jamibora is training program for our members. We discover that many of our members have never borrowed money anywhere else, as this is a new thing that they are doing. Therefore, we have got to help them to know how to write down the expenses, the capital that they have received, the interest that they have received, and plan so that they can be able to repay back their loans without having to misuse the funds in other things that are not necessarily important. In our business school in Jamibora, we use our own members to be role models, actually to teach others and explain practical to the other members. 
if you have a member who is running a taxi and there is another member who wants to know how they can start a taxi business, we get a successful taxi or cab owner so that they can sit together, drive around, explain and show them how it's being run. I can say that Jamibora is one of the practical. We don't just have lecturers coming from a university. We have real practical people. Levuka is a Kiswahili word, which means to become sober. And it is to help our members get out of alcoholism. Because you only need one alcoholic in the family. If it is a, a big son, one of the young adults, then he will steal the mother's money. If she tries to hide it even in her bra or under the bed, he will beat her up if she's hidden it too well to be able to take the money because he's so desperate about alcohol. So it's not a problem just for that person. It's a problem for the whole family. Lefuka program in Jamibora came up as a necessity because you cannot have a good family and your business cannot prosper when you have a husband who is abusing alcohol. Therefore, we felt that we need to come up with an in-house program for helping our sons to be rehabilitated. We got our training from uh, famous Alcoholics Anonymous. We follow the same method, but we have adapted it to our members. The housing came up because Jamibora is constructing 2,000 housing units in a town called Kapute, which is close to 60 kilometers from Nairobi. And the dream of the housing was after the overwhelming members joining Jamibora came to realize there's no way, after we give our members loans, we give them the health insurance, what about better housing? I have a very beautiful house like this. This is my dream. I could not think that I will be with a good house like this. Now I, I, I am owning a house in Kaputei and here in Kenya to dream of a stone house, a permanent building here in Kenya, that dream, my friend. Somebody from the slum to dream of owning a house, it's a dream you would not even dare to dream. Uh, this is my toilet. <laughs> now some of the members of Jamibora, they can boost around by saying we have a house by myself and whereby they have to nickname it the promised land, Kapute. If our members need it, we do it. I've always told the staff in Jamibora and also members, if you move ahead, and you know you have to reach a certain point. Then you stop because there's a mountain. You find a big mountain. You can't stop and say, there's a mountain here, I can't move. You either find a way of moving around the mountain and when you are on the other side, figure out where you which direction you should still go, or you develop the strength to move up the mountain and down on the other side, or which is what I prefer and what I have encouraged my staff and the members to do, you simply move the mountain. That's what we do all the time, all the time. We find the problem, we move it, we find the solution and then we realize there was no mountain there. And that's our motto. There is no mountain that will stop us in Jamibora from going where we have to go. So in Jamibora we don't say no to the poorest, most aggressive beggar who says, there's only this life for me. We don't exclude even criminals. We don't exclude prostitutes. We don't look down on anybody and say, you're a bad person. We say, there is a life for you as well. Jamibora provides a ladder for poor people to do the climbing themselves. They have to do the climbing while holding each other's hand so that there is no one who is too poor to save. That's what we are teaching them. And we instill the discipline of saving because most of the poor people, not that they don't get money, but they spend on things that they don't necessarily need. So they are able to cut on their expenditure 
and be able to save. And that way they discover, oh, so I can also make it. I can save money. I thought I'm too poor to even be able to save. I'm very happy with Jamie Bora. My life changed with my children. You can see I have now my grandchildren. So I'm happy with Jamie Bora. My life changed in a good way. And I'm happy. When I was very poor, I was very, very old and it was very thin. But now, instead of getting old, I'm getting short, younger. <laughs> so that's why I'm proud. Yeah. Well, everyone has a potential to get out of poverty. That's what Jamie Bora does here. And we have many talents that we are nurturing here in this community. And above and beyond Kebera, because Jamie Bora is all over the country. And that's what we are doing, changing lives. But when I say we are changing life, I mean as an organization, we are encouraging people to change their own lives. You can't get anybody out of poverty by lifting them and saying, now you're not poor anymore, I'm paying your school fees, I'm paying the food, I'm, I've got you a house. Because the minute that nice person dies or leaves the country, because he was a, a, a foreign visitor, then they'll fall down again. And then they will hurt themselves more than before. But if they climb themselves, there's no way. They might sleep sometimes. The business didn't work out, they sleep, but they don't go down. I was climbing the radar of crime. But now Mama Ingrid brought another radar, a true radar. The good thing with Jamie Bora, the good thing with Mama Ingrid, she keeps on telling us, this is the radar. But the crabbing, you have to crab on your own. The crabbing is yours. The things that we thought were impossible, they have now become possible. Why Jamie Bora is such an important model uh, for the world and for community development is because it starts with this very deep, I would almost dare say spiritual underpinning that we truly are all equal as human beings, that each of us have infinite potential inside ourselves, and that that's not just lip service. At Jamie Bora there's this belief that no matter who you are, a beggar, a prostitute, someone who's really fallen on hard times. If you reach out and pull yourself up, there will be a community waiting to help you get to that next place. And, and then they do it. And I think that that's what makes it such a, a powerful organization, but also such a beautiful organization. Because you can't help but be infected by the belief in the human spirit to do the impossible on a minute individual level, on a community level, and then it's not that difficult to start believing uh, uh, that change at a global level, but it starts with the person. On what Jamie Bora is doing, it's making poverty become history. As I know, when Mohammed Yudus received the Nobel Prize, he said, maybe our grandchildren will go to the museum and see how poverty was. And I think this is the way that Jamie Bora is following the footsteps. The story of microfinance, at its best and at its heart, is the story of doing what others saw as impossible, doing what people saw as the undoable, breaking the rules and establishing a new set of rules and possibilities. I think if there's a group of 30 watching a, a film like this. It might be 20 that say, only there. She's got charisma. We couldn't do it. But there are 10 others who are saying, we could do this. We need to learn some more, but we could do this. And that's what would make the difference.